So uh, here we are with the, uh, the new IKEA bottom cabinet center. Not very expensive, very easy to assemble. We'll show that in the rest of this video. Okay, going is the IKEA PS. This is a kind of a multi-purpose cabinet. It's part of their new metal cabinet system. Tends to be low on tools, long on just kind of snap together and bend the tab. So first things first is we unpack very carefully. Now, one of the things to look out for on this compared to the other IKEA furniture, I'm in a very, very cool uh, a West of the Pearl upgraded, remodeled uh, classic home. Very, very cool. Hopefully we're gonna see more videos, more stuff on this later. But we have to be really careful with the edges of this stuff it is rounded it is decently dealt with but we don't want to be gouging or cutting anything especially this kind of fancied up floor uh you know we'd have to be careful setting anything on these uh, on the furniture uh so we don't gouge or cut anything with corners on this stuff you know it's a thick rug when you throw sheet metal and it makes no noise at all so anyway uh that's the thing to be really careful about just because this is metal and not wood uh, we want to be careful not to cut any of this as we work they give a exploded view and a drawing of the panels you kind of look at that one picture to see what makes sense as you look around at the panels you have one of the ways you identify them is hole locations now as far as your hardware kit there's no screws okay there's this pin thing a couple little washer like things and then this uh, foam don't throw this away this is used as basically padding on a part we'll show later. And so a lot of this, pretty much, you almost don't even need a Leatherman tool for it, but I'll use one. And it's, it's basically insert stuff together and bend the tab. So this video is going to go relatively quickly uh, as, as we do this. First stage first, this can look a little tricky. We're going to identify that square piece. And then we identify what the feet are on this, okay? So we're going to be looking for that. And the way these work, there's a little tab underneath, so this can get frustrating for some people because it's not clear in the directions. You stick that in at an angle, and then when we go up like this, it's actually going to snap in place. And then um, it's not real tight right now. There's some other stuff that goes in that will tighten it up as we put the other stuff in. For the two ends here, we just basically, you, you slide these things, and you see these little circles, that corresponds to a little bump, little detent here, so once that slides in, you snap, and that's it. That's, that's what we're going to do to put the sides on. And as you put in the pieces, it becomes more rigid. Right side up, we've got a back piece here, Here's where we're going to look carefully for some orientation clues. See this little square hole here? There's no square hole there. That's going to correspond to one of these little bend over tabs. So, we have to stick this and we're playing around a little bit with some angles. And you're going to see why these need to remain a little bit loose and flexible until we get all the pieces in. So right now it's just set together. It's a little haphazard. As we get all of the other pieces in, we're going to start bending those little tabs over, and that's what makes this whole thing tighter. So this is interesting. So these pieces are in. They're not super tight yet. But what we're going to do is we look and notice how this has a hole at one side. We place it in like that. We want to be very careful not to rub this stuff. If you rub it, it scratches. But we're setting this into its little little slot position you shouldn't have to force this but when you set it at the front use that hole as a handle to kind of position this stuff it will snap down into its position now we can we, we can see how that's gone in there and this whole thing started to stiffen up that's where we can start bending the little tabs over and so we go for this one right here, simply bend it in. Try to figure out why that one isn't going there, but that will go here. I think it's just because these pieces were a little more universal. 
the top is going to hold on more uh, is what's going to hold the sides in. So it's really all you do on that. Is you, is you bend a few tabs. You don't want to bend any of those prematurely, but we're looking at the instructions and we also have to look at how some of this stuff goes with these corners. We'll show you that right now. This one over, you are not bending this one. That we hold off till we're putting the top on. And so as you can see, this thing started to become much more rigid and then we snap on the top. Snapping on the top, we take that felt piece, we put it across here. That's just so that you don't have like a rattling noise when you set stuff on the top. That's basically what that's for. So once we set the top on here, we'll show you how that goes. You want to be careful here. You see this little lip here? That's what goes into there. That These have to go inside of those side lips, kind of like a knife edge. Those detents are going to bump out of those little holes. So we'll show how that goes. See with that snapped into place, everything's pretty rigid. And uh, it's become much more, actually pretty rigid and solid just from, just basically from snapping together. Now before I finalize the doors, we, uh, we want to get the little shelf brackets in. These are dirt simple, little little piece of metal here. And what we're going to do is you, you put it to this hole and it sits like this when it's all said and done or kind of like that. The narrow end of that slot goes in one of these. Now, if you're just going to go for average, I just kind of put it where the hole is. Boom. And that's how the shelf is held up. It, it just reduces the chances of scratching anything to put the shelves in before the door is on. But as you can see, we're going in diagonally. We kind of go up a little past our, our spot here. And um, that one's in. And so that's basically it. Now there's a little hole in the back. It's a big hole in the bottom. Those are for passing wires. Let's say I've used this as an entertainment center. And uh, we're going to show a little bit on a door hinge. Very simple. These things kind of look like they're little Allen wrench tools, but they're not. Um, that's what holds the hinges very securely. And we'll show you that in a few seconds here. It's, it's a pretty slick mechanism. The upper and lower are identical. We're using this very simple pin arrangement. Easier to do this outside of the thing. Now the hole here is a little tight so you can kind of stick one in there. Kind of work it just to loosen that up. It's the powder coating or paints tighten that up. So that hinge, or the pin, basically you insert it in there and then you'll flip it to the side and bend that tab uh, down to hold it. Now if you're going to take this piece apart you'd bend that tab back, take the hinge out and that's how you go. Where it sticks down here is sufficient for these holes. So as long as you line all of those holes up everything's good. Now you'll notice louvers here, louvers always face down. Okay, that's, that's basically how that works. And so the louvers are up and down on this type of uh, thing. The other thing to be careful of, I notice, is that when you unpack the doors, they come basically in a locked position. So if, if it's locked, I mean, it's nice, a little bit of security, a little bit of that school locker look. You, you, I can't seem to get the key out when it's in the unlocked position. The key doesn't want to come out. If I do this, well, then we're bumping into the thing and we could scratch it. So that's one of the things to be aware of. You may want to take the keys off the ring and put each key in its individual locked or key to like when you're getting ready to uh, present this to somebody. All right, so the way this works is there's a little plastic ring. I don't know if that shows up in the camera. You stick that on the bottom pin right here. I have that pin kind of locked in by its angle. That's what kind of keeps these things from uh, kind of being noisy or rubbing on the bottom when it goes in. So you've got that little plastic ring in there. You put this in. Simply fold that over enough that it doesn't swing out. We do this end. We're going to line up those holes. You got that lined up. There's, there's only two of those little plastic things in this kit, so that's basically what we're doing. And again, be aware of what I had in the earlier segment about that lock, because we don't want to slam that because of the way that is. And uh, so we're almost done. Press the red button. So there we are. Uh, basically, it's, it's all done. 
Uh, a different system, you're going to need almost no tools for this thing. In fact, uh, realistically, you, you could almost have used a uh, hinge pin where I used a Leatherman tool. Uh, relatively fast assembly once you get the hang of this particular furniture system. Uh, but remember, it's, it's relatively thin metal, so you don't want to manhandle it really hard. You could tweak some of the pieces, and of course, as that warning, the keys stay in the locks normally on a day-to-day -day basis. If you, you can't unlock it and take the key out, it's the way they design the lock. Uh, 